Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to go over polarised versus unpolarised waves, so let's get into it. To kick off the final subtopic called polarisation, we're going to be looking at the difference between polarised versus unpolarised waves. So it starts here by saying that polarisation is an effect most commonly observed when using polarising lenses and sunglasses, which reduces the glare from reflective surfaces such as water or glass. For example, the pictures of koi carp show the same pond viewed through a polarising filter on the right and without a filter on the left. So looking at the two pictures side by side here, we've got the polarised view on the right and the unpolarised view on the left. And if you look at the unpolarised one, you can see lots of glare from light being reflected off the water surface, and that makes the fish difficult to see under the water. Whereas if you look at the polarised view found from using polarising filters and sunglasses, then you can clearly make out the fish a lot more clearly and a lot more detail. And that's because the sunglasses have reduced the glare here. Now, before we look at the difference between polarised and unpolarised waves, we need to remind ourselves what light actually is. So you might remember in the electromagnetism topic, we have a section at the end called electromagnetic radiation, and it's where we look at what light is made up of. So in that topic, we think about light as being an electromagnetic wave, where it's got oscillating electric field and magnetic field components. And these are shown in the diagram here. So remember the electric field and the magnetic field components actually oscillate at 90 degrees to each other, perpendicular to each other. So you'll see the green wave here in the z-axis represents the magnetic induction or the magnetic field strength. And then we've got this orange wave as well, which represents the electric field strength. And this is along the y direction. So you can see the axes y and z are at 90 degrees to each other. And that means that our electric field and magnetic field components are also at 90 degrees to each other. And if I click play here, you'll see the direction of wave propagation is to the right. And it's also worth pointing out that when the electric field reaches a maximum, that the magnetic field or magnetic induction also reaches a maximum as well. So when the labels flash up here, that's showing you that they are at a maximum point. So we can see that occurs at the same time. And for the purposes of polarisation, we are interested in the orange wave, which represents the electric field strength. So we can think about light in terms of electric field strength, and we're going to do so in terms of vectors. So looking back at the notes, it says here that light which is not polarised has electric field oscillations in every plane perpendicular to its travel, i.e. the vectors vibrate in all directions. So down on the left hand side here we have what unpolarised light would look like, and some examples of unpolarised light would be sunlight and light from a bulb or lamp. And remember we said we're going to describe the light here in terms of the electric field vectors. And we can see we've got these electric field oscillations or vectors in every plane for the unpolarised light. However, it then says all the individual electric field strength vectors could be resolved into two mutually perpendicular directions to give the other representation of an unpolarised wave. So we could combine all of these lines in between the vertical and the horizontal ones into just a vertical and horizontal component of the electric field. And you can see that here for number two, where we've got the vertical and horizontal components of the electric field oscillations. And that is us simplified the unpolarised light from the left hand side. Lastly, it says that when polarised, the electric field oscillations occur in only one plane. And this diagram for number three shows an example of polarised light. And you can see the electric field vector here only has one plane. So this is the vertical plane as opposed to the horizontal plane. So if we were thinking about a polarising filter and the light being polarised in the vertical plane, then that means that light would only pass through in the vertical plane and would be blocked in the horizontal plane. That is, the light from the unpolarised wave here in the horizontal plane wouldn't get through, but the light in the vertical plane would. And that's how polarising sunglasses, for example, are able to block out light or reduce glare. So just to recap, unpolarised light has electric field oscillations in every plane, whereas polarised light, which we often call plane polarised light, has electric field oscillations in one plane only. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.